Welcome back to our community. Susie Tom is visiting with Terry Hunka, who is the founder of the Martin Center in Southeast Canton, located on 3rd Street in Southeast Canton. Yes. And uh, I love hearing the stories because you have had kids have dramatic life-changing experiences there. Tell me a little bit about some of those. Well, I can tell you one story, uh, and I won't use his real name. Um, but this, uh, we were having a volunteer picnic, um, and, and it was just a, a night that we um, showed a little appreciation for volunteers that come day in and day out and, and month in and month out and help us out. And so we were having a little cookout, and Corey, my, my son, um, who is planning a church at the Martin Center mm-hmm. um, in October, was supposed to come out and present the vision of, you know, like, here's where we were and here's where we we are going. You know, we talked about the plaza and we talked about different things and we were going to talk about the church. And in typical fashion, he was late. (laughs) And so I'm like, you know, I'm a radio guy, so I'm, you know, timing (laughs) is everything, you know, so I'm getting a little antsy and a little (laughs) irritated and um, stuff. And he comes out finally. And so I introduce him. He walks up there to speak, and he says, um, I'm sorry I'm late. He says, but um, I was just dealing with a young man who told me he hated three things in life. Um, He hates um, Christians, he hates white people, and he hates pastors. And Corey said, well, you know, we're in trouble because I'm all three, right. you know, and stuff. And so um, he met with this man. Um, and he was also claiming to be a Muslim. Mm-hmm. And I, around Christmas time, he decided we give the word every night. We give a little 10 minute devotion. Mm-hmm. And um, he decided that, you know, he wasn't going to be a part of that because he was now a Muslim. Mm-hmm. And so um, Corey said, OK, you know, you can you don't have to come in to that. But. You have to meet with me for 10 minutes once a week. Mm-hmm. And he said, okay, I'll, I'll do that. And so Corey had been meeting with him um, from December, and this was in May. And um, so he said, uh, now fast forward back to him speaking to our group, and he said, um, I'm sorry I'm late, but I was dealing with this guy. And he told the story of, uh, about this guy. And he said, I'm all three, so we, we're, in, we're in trouble. And um, he said, well... Uh, He said, well, tell me about this God that you think is just so Mm. awesome and stuff. Wow. And so Corey Corey started sharing with him. And, and, you know, then the next question was, well, you know, what is that to me? Who, you know, who am I? To make a long story short, um, he was dealing with that young man and leading, leading him to the Lord that very night. Wow. And so. You know, and and this particular kid is, um, he makes his living um, a different way. <laughs> than, not, not legal? <laughs> than, than most of us. I'm okay. not going to say it's illegal. All right. Um, but he also has five kids. Wow. You know, young wow. man, 22 years old. And... Um, it's like you know one one of the one of the things we think about is if somebody gets saved and you know gets Jesus in their life, their life just changes and they have to make all these changes in their life. Well, where does a guy without a high school diploma who has been in gangs for you know most of his adult life um, and makes buku bucks? To you know, support five. Children. How does he support five children now? Mm-hmm. Where does he get a job? Who's going to hire a five? Um, uh, or a, a high school dropout with five kids wow. that needs probably sixty thousand dollars a year. I don't know what that figure is, but mm-hmm. X number of dollars a year to mm-hmm. live. Mm-hmm. You know, plus there goes away the protection for his family. I, I mean, you know, we we as Christians we don't think about that. Oh, you got Jesus in your heart now. You're changed. Mm, okay, he is. His environment has not. One of the one of the things that. Um, uh, we have a guy down there, coach that um, that has known this guy since he was about three years old, and he came in and he said, "I ca- I can't believe what what are you doing to this kid?" You know, and we to- we said, "Well, you know, he accepted Christ," and he said, "I I just can't believe the difference in him." Wow! It's it's um, you know, no sir, yes sir, yes ma'am. Um, what can I do for you? How can I help you? 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's just the change in him is very evident. Mm. However, how do we, what do we do? What responsibility do we have? That's kind of what we're wrestling with, what mm-hmm. responsibility we have and how do we change his circumstances? Great question. Do you work with a job services kinds of organizations, uh, the GED. Uh, Earlier this week, we found out about the ABLE program through Canton City Schools. Um, Are you connected to other organizations because you cannot be your own island? We don't don't have an official, Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, relationship with them, but we know people, Mm -hmm. you know, and so we know that you know, there's this GED program at Stark State, and we know, so we know the yes. guy that runs that, and and you know, so we can plug people in there. We know, you know, where you can get meals. We know where you can get, you know, different physical needs and and stuff like that. So, you know, no, we don't have an official agreement written down, mm-hmm. a contract or anything like that. But we work very well with um, with other. Um, 501c3s, uh, nonprofit agencies in Canton. And it does seem, too, that uh, in the area in Canton, uh, and I'm going to guess in other cities as well, your ministry kind of focuses on southeast. There's another ministry that focuses on northeast. I'm sure. um, Do you all kind of share information among each other? Um, We do. We have, um, like, for instance, we have a rescue house across the street, um, and we we partner with an agency um, to, they run it, uh, you know, we own it, but they run it and and stuff, so we partner with them in that, Um, and, you know, we're all the time going and seeking people Mm -hmm. like-minded that are having some of the same struggles or some of the same victories that we are, and we all commiserate together (laughs) sometimes. And, uh, you know, just just share information and share yeah. um, and, you know, we, we pick each other up when we fall and, and we just help each other out. Let's talk about partnerships that take place within the Martin Center, because mm-hmm. you are kind of like one stop shopping for a lot of help for a lot of people all under one roof. Who would we find? Um, you'd find Pal Mission. Mm-hmm. Um, you'd find uh, which which works with homeless teenagers, um, and they do a fabulous job. Um, you know, like I said, we have the rescue house over there that um, is is picking up more and more, and it seems to be you know getting spaces limited now and and stuff. Um, we have child and adolescent services that is a um, uh, kind of a counseling uh, area. A lot of our kids are um, maybe dependent on on uh, drugs or, or something like that. So we have some counseling services available. Uh, like I said earlier, we have um, Corey, who is a pastor mm-hmm. and is planting a church there uh, through River Tree. Um, and so we have pastoral counseling. Um, we have Garrett, who does... Um, uh, sports leagues and mm-hmm. sports ministry throughout. Uh, we also have um, Pathway, um, who they have they they pay a guy. And if Pathway, if you're listening, please turn your radio off, because I don't know why, but they pay a guy to be down there and just hang out yeah. and build relationships with these kids. And it's, it's like important. it is so important. And the kids have responded. And um, I'll tell you what, his name's Jason West, and Jason just does a tremendous job um, of relating with these kids. Uh, it's it's awesome. But, you know, and then we have, of course, Heritage that, that uh, you know, is in our gym and rents our gym for the basketball season. You know, so there's a lot of partnerships and pretty much, we you know, we have the garden across the street that, you know, Junior League's involved with that, and we partner with Junior League for the van and we partner with junior league for the you know kitchen and Mm -hmm. and stuff like that so um you know our partners are very important to us it's so cool to see lots of life going down there but you said a phrase a couple of times that i just need to to understand a little bit better and that is the that of homeless teens Mm -hmm. what kind of problem is there in canton can't imagine being without a home but throw the fact that you're a child on your own without you're not homeless with your parents you're homeless on your own as a teenager yeah this is a problem in canton that's a big problem um now um 
I'm not sure it's recognized as a bigger problem as as it really is, um, for the simple reason of we have a lot of kids that um, couch surf. Um, I wasn't familiar with that term until I started down at the Martin Center, and it, it's it's where um, kids don't have a stable home environment or any home environment, and so they just stay on their friend's couch for a while until their parents get mad at them and kick them out, and then they stay at so-and-so's house for a while, and then they say, you know, stay here, stay there. Um, and that's a very, very real and very, very big um, problem among our teenagers. Um, what you know, is there for them? Because it would seem that to be able to get into some of the housing that's available for the homeless and when there's shelters, some of the things they ask for you wouldn't have because you're a teenager. Correct, correct. And that and that's why homelessness is such a big problem among teenagers because, you know, you see them. Um, I know, <laughs> um, I know of a 16 year old girl who's living in a tent on the corner of such and such and such mm-hmm. and such and has been living there for about a year um, cuz she was thrown out of her house and has nowhere to go no family no no friends um you know she's ostracized by um the kids that she went to school with and i mean it's just a mess um you've got a lot of when any time that you have um drug abuse alcohol abuse and poverty yeah. all mixed in the same area yeah. you're going to have problems yes. you're going to have family problems and so what what it is is these kids are either thrown out of the houses because they're disrespectful or whatever or their mothers they're being raised by a, by a mom who can't handle them yes. anymore you know i know of an 11 year old kid who's been arrested 21 times oh my. you know imagine that parent yeah imagine her trying to deal with that you know so, you know, for a variety of reasons, and you're right, the resources just aren't there. You know, we're wrestling. I mean, we don't have all the answers. We don't have half the answers. You know, we're just trying to figure out how as we go, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the house, the, the um, Clifford Compass House, is a great start. Mm-hmm. You know, and Powell Mission is is great because they are providing shelter shelter to teenagers. Yes, who would thirteen not to have seventeen years old. Thirteen to seventeen. That's mm-hmm. mind bending. What do you need in the way of volunteers, funding, and congratulations again on the twenty five thousand dollars? I know that is going to help tremendously. Sure, but that goes towards a kitchen, right. and that's sort of been earmarked. What can we do as far as funding and and volunteer hours for you? Um, we need it all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> More specifically. So um, we feed our kids every night. And thank God we have um, Sunday school groups and churches and civic groups and, and people that just care bringing food down. You know, give us a call because we can always use, you know, we got a lot of nights coming up that aren't filled with a group bringing food down. If that happens, we have to go buy pizza or we have to do we have to spend money that is earmarked for other things, mm-hmm. you know, like utility bills and and stuff like that. And can I throw in fresh fruit and some things that maybe right. they wouldn't be getting normally? Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Um you know, we need we need volunteers. We need people to to staff the the nights that were there and stuff. You know, just come down and hang out, and build a relationship with with some of these kids. They love it. We love it. Um, you know, and and you know things like trash bag things that people don't think about. You know, uh, we go through probably fifteen trash bags a night. You know, well. You know, That's next time you're at the store, donation. <laughs> buy some, buy an extra box of trash bags. You're right. It just needs to be on the top of our mind. We're going to need to catch up with you again, and and we want to be kept up to date on how this goes because you're doing amazing things in downtown Canton. Terry Honka with the Martin Center. Thank you so much for joining us in our community. Anytime.